His award words over whether or not Joe Biden supported privatizing Social Security. We're back with Maximilian Alvarez, host of the Working People podcast and former Georgia Congressman Jack Kingston. To be clear, the question is not whether he supported mm. privatizing Social Security, but whether he supported cutting Social That's Security, right. which That's is right. Sorry about not that. disputed, by yeah. the way. There's a long record of him being open to cuts of Social Security. But there was a particular video that was circulated by the Sanders campaign that shows Biden saying similar things to what he said over the years that has created a whole hubbub. Let's take a look at that. Paul Ryan was correct. When he did the tax code, what's the first thing he decided we had to go after? Social Security and Medicare. Now, we need to do something about Social Security and Medicare. That's the only way. You can find room to pay for it. So, Max. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it seems pretty clear. <laughs> and this is consistent. Even if you say, okay, it's, yeah. it's not the full context, et cetera, et cetera, this is consistent with his track record over many years. There are many more comments that are very similar. And there's also during the Obama administration when they kept going back the Republicans again and again and again, trying to cut a grand bargain, which would have included cutting Social Security. So, that's the track record. However, Joe Biden took great offense to this and accused Bernie Sanders, and this is just completely inaccurate, the Sanders campaign, of putting out a doctored video. Let's take a listen to Biden. There's a little doctored video going around saying that, put out by, should I just, anyway, put out by one, one of Bernie's people. No, I'm serious. And I don't know when my staff has that video here, but... Uh, saying that I agreed with Paul Ryan, the former vice presidential candidate, about wanting to privatize Social Security. It is, and, and PolitiFax looked at it, and they, they doctored the photo. They doctored the piece. And it's acknowledged that it's a fake. Uh, First of it's all, not a fake. <laughs> it's not a fake. It's not doctored. Um, also, the charisma there through the roof right, with our Lord. presidential frontrunner. <laughs> yeah. But go ahead, Max, weigh in on all of this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, going back to, to what we were saying about the New York Times kind of segment and how Bernie is always kind of painted as like the, the, the mirror image of Trump. This is kind of what blows my mind, right, is that, you know, Biden is, in, you know, employing the most Trumpian tactics that essentially boil down to the Groucho Marx quote of who are you going to believe, me or your lying eyes? Right. Yeah. Right? I, I legitimately don't know what the debate is here. Like, yeah. Biden's track record is as clear as day. Of course he's tried to cut Social Security. He's been, he's prided himself on representing the right-wing ideological faction that took over the Democratic Party 30 years ago. Yeah. And that has routinely offered up the things that working people count on, Medicaid, mm -hmm. Social Security, as bargaining chips to appeal to their Republican colleagues. I mean, Ryan Grimm laid this all out at The Intercept. David Dian wrote about it at the American Prospect. I don't mm -hmm. know what, what exactly we're debating. Yeah, there, there really isn't much of a debate. What it is, Jack, I think is a cynical move by Biden but going on the Hillary Clinton campaign, saying, oh, fake news is why we want to be, some Russian bots or whatever. They are trying to resort to calling out, you know, like doctored video using coded words as if the Russians or something like that is involved. When he can't, why didn't he just answer for his record? I mean, it, it's just, I think it's a deeply cynical ploy to call it a doctored video because that just harkens back to the, the media knows exactly how to go with that story. Well, yeah. you know, one might say yeah. on my side, uh -huh. um, and I, that Charlottesville and this, they're good people on both uh -huh. sides, had nothing to do with white supremacists. It had to do with the debate over Confederate monuments. Well, let's not and do yet, this. Well, and that's <laughs> true. Crystal's pretty let's well documented. Do he is right. I'll, no, I'll give you another no, one. I'll yeah. give come on. They're well, marching with tiki torches in yeah. the streets. That, but Janet that's Jews not what will his... will not replace us. Let's the, talk but, about that. But that was not his quote. And, and you know, another one, a new Gingrich said that mm. ICFA, the Healthcare Finance and, uh, Association, would die on the vine. Democrats took that for years and said, Newt Gingrich said Medicare would die on the vine. So this is politics. And, and I, I, you know, I mean, I can see why there would be mm. some angst. But when you go into Iowa, you're weeks away, and Bernie Sanders just raised $36 million <laughs> in the last right. quarter, yeah. and you got seven top tier well financed candidates, this is what it's going to boil down to is food fights over. You said, uh, no, I did yeah. not. And, uh, but it's amazing. Just, it's fair point, it's, though. it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing the way that the media just reflexively takes Biden's side, though. I mean, yeah. first of all, PolitiFact puts out a thing saying that you know this video that that was put out 
that Ryan Graham did the piece on, no, it, this context is accurate, and this is what Biden was really saying. PolitiFact says that that's false, that it's, you know, taken out of context, et cetera. And then Paul Krugman over the New York Times also <laughs> takes Biden's side, right? I mean, it's just relentlessly always siding with Biden. Any sort of attack or, or question about his record is off the table. You can't say it. You might be divisive, et cetera, et cetera. But on the other hand, they're happy to smear him as angry, as divisive, and it's completely hypocritical critical. They're allowed to launch nasty personal smears, Elizabeth Warren, hello, at Bernie Sanders, but he's not allowed to even talk about the actual track record of the candidates he's going against. Yeah. I mean, you know, this, this goes directly back to, you know, the problem with the New York Times endorsement, mm -hmm. right? The pundit class loves to celebrate people like Biden as, you know, the, the deal makers, right? The, 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 the people who are capable of compromising and of making the tough decisions, right, to get things done. That all sounds fine until you realize that this is what they're talking about. Mm. Getting things done, you know, mm -hmm. in, in the, the, the Democratic Party lexicon of, you know, over the past 30 um, years, right, is to sacrifice the things that working people depend on to appease their Republican colleagues when the Democrats are in power and then take it on the chin when Republicans are in power and, you know, use all that good faith to stonewall them, to do what they want to get done, to give away huge tax breaks um, to the wealthy and the corporations while people like Biden are championing themselves as, like, fiscally responsible yeah. people. Well, and, Trump, and also, none but, of this is right. going to be off the table for the Trump campaign. They yeah. will use whatever they can. They're not going to be squeamish right. about talking about Social not to touch Security Social or corruption. And, yeah. or anything else. Yeah. I, I think track. there was some yeah. irony in the fact yeah. that he was talking to an audience who would never get the benefit True. of what they're paying into Social Security. It's a mathematical fact. The generation he was speaking to is the generation who's getting screwed right now, mm. the worst when it comes to the management of Social Security. So I wish we could actually fantasize a minute and have a mature discussion of what to do with such an important program. Yeah. Well, Agreed. But also, uh, Charlottesville was about fascism and white supremacy. But well, that's that. Well, that statement that was not. That is the man. last thing I want to make. The, the today. Putting that down. Yeah. The, the <laughs> statement was Thanks, not guys. putting that down. Thank you. All right. Tomorrow on Rising, we finally found Tom Steyer supporters. Yes. We are going to get to the root <laughs> yes. of the 2020 campaign. Yes. And Hi, the show, Michael Brooks is going to share his impeachment takes. And also, he just had a sit down with Lula in Brazil. We want to talk to him about that as well. Have a fabulous day. And we will see you back here tomorrow. Thank you, guys. <laughs>